sisters, I was on Cecil B, Broad Street, Master, North Philly, South Philly, 23rd, Tasta, 6 Mile, 7 Mile, Hartwell, Brasher, when niggas really would pack a U-Haul truck up, put the high beams on, drive up on the curb at a barbecue and hop up out the back like, what's up, kill a nigga, rob a nigga, take a nigga, bust up, that's why when you talk that tough talk, I never feel you, you sound real good and you play the part well, but the energy you giving off is so unfamiliar. I don't feel you. We need Sean Miller. Nas hit me up on the phone, said what you waiting on. Tip hit me up with a twit, said what you waiting on. Diddy send me text every hour on the dot, saying when you gon' drop that first nigga you taking off. So now I'm back spitting that he can pass a polygraph. That Reverend Run rockin' Adidas out on Hollis Ave. That FOI Marcus Garvey, Nicky Tesla. I shock you like an eel electric field, J.E. Electra. Oh my God. I got you. Stay down in the A, down for the fray, down for the play, like on the lay. Where my me go at? Where my she go at? Where my he go at? I pull the legal back. I take the legal back. I take the legal neck. I take the legal sack. Roll it up, pass it up, roll A. Look, <laughs> eight bar. I'm waiting on my guest, Big Baby Gandhi. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. All right, okay, 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 okay. okay. Got the flow, for the low, Geronimo, Monomo, Monami, Habla, Habla Espanol, Bigoma, Bigome, Frito A, got the pay, got the lay, got the way, yeah, that way. I'm talking South Way, I'm talking North Way, I'm talking everywhere. Hey. I'm, I'm just warming up, man. We went, we went on Gandhi. We waiting on Gandhi, he coming, give me five minutes. We waiting on Gandhi. He coming. He running a little late, but really it's like how many how many um how many people I've interviewed this far? Every new interview feels like Feels like the most important interview. Um, and it's like, what, why interview rappers? Because we used to have, we used to have civil rights activists. We used to have, not now for just stupid rappers and new role models. Uh, he better run. Yeah, I'm here. This is this is this is it. This is what we've been we've been working towards for a while now. My name is Mustafa Babakar. I'm here with Big Baby Gandhi, Queens Queens proud rap tradition um, has been renewed with with the diverse new generation rapping the respective hoods in in Mass Appeal magazine. Big Yo, baby guy made. You doing good? I, I, I'm do, I'm doing well, man. I'm I'm I'm, right? I'm I'm doing well. I'm 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 all right. How are you? Uh, o- overall can't complain. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot a lot of sh- lot of shit going down. 
you know. Yeah, there's the there there is a lot there is a lot a lot a lot a lot that I want to get to. Um, I I I kind of want to introduce introduce you for the people who who may who may not be familiar, oh, and and for and for the sake and for the sake of the video. So. So in in Massacre Magazine, Big Baby Donnie was listed as as you made you made the year end rap list and you were able to you were able to turn that into multiple record deals spanning from spanning from your days in Queens to your days in California to to back to New York and all the meanwhile traversing different segments of the music industry from notable record labels like Greedhead, like being affiliated with Das Races from, from way, way back and also doing your thing in the Bay and in Oakland. Um, you, 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 you've been a pillar of independent rap for, for years and years now, um, spanning back to your, to your first mixtape. And you've always been unapologetically, unapologetically yourself, I would say. And you, it's, it's difficult to remain yourself in an industry where conformity is the name of the game. And it is, and it is the the most important, I would say, thing that allows people to be successful. So thank you for taking time today. I appreciate you so much. Um, yeah, no problem. That was um, yeah, that was a very. I appreciate that intro. Uh, for sure. You know, for sure. you know, I don't like to talk about myself like that. No, um, definitely. That's but I mean. uh, you know, um, I also uh, I know I know you. You're the homie. I I know Mustafa for like a minute good people um how's things how's things in atlanta man um atlanta is atlanta is going through waves of of people who are not from atlanta moving to atlanta and, and feeling as if yeah. they because they because they are in the south and because they are able to not be on a plane, but get in their cars and drive to the capital of Georgia, that they can lay claim to what is the civil rights capital of the world. Yeah, that's you can't deny that. This is this is the birthplace of of Martin Luther King Jr. It's it's the birthplace of of of, of another polarizing figure, Kanye West, who doesn't claim it, but you know he says it's it's a fact that he was born in this city. Atlanta is going it's, it's 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 not as big a city as New York or LA, but it is going through things that has that, that have made people question the mayor of Atlanta. It's yeah. made people it's made people question the mayor, it's made people question the the overall population that is going on and, and, and the amount of the amount of black people that are in Atlanta, Atlanta being a black city, Atlanta being a, a city populated with mainly majority African Americans, there is bound to be some some divide there amongst the population that large in yeah. in terms of ideologies. So people are hurt. Well that's that's people, the crazy thing with the that's the crazy thing with this whole thing is I feel like ideology drives people apart like left and right whatever i get it it's politics but i feel like what's going on with corona and then um you know the protests over racial justice overall are are both kind of bigger than just left versus right so i think that's what's really interesting because i feel like you know like low-key um you know if we take the strife out of it this is this is actually like a really dope moment right now because there's so much hope for what things could be. Like I was saying that, you know, the best case scenario is that we never, we never uh, have to go back to how things were, right? Because that was the way things were was like the real issue, you know. And I think uh, even now people are seeing how like certain uh, platforms that they advocate for how they play out in real life. Because Corona is mm -hmm. acting like a, like a petri dish. We can see how things move now because we have all these isolated factors. So. I think it's like, you know, obviously like a lot going down, but you know, if, if, if what we're seeing every day keeps happening, that just means that shit is going to get better. You know, like it's going to get worse before it gets better, but that's always how it's happened in this country. So, you know, and Atlanta definitely play a huge part in that. Well, what is your earliest memory of 
of injustice as far as you can remember seeing it for yourself or racism um, for that matter so, against African Americans or against in the Bangladeshi Americans well I, I can tell you so uh, I grew up in I grew up in Queens right Flushing Queens so we grew up in um, like a couple of different apartment buildings and one of the first ones was we lived in the projects and then I was just in the lobby one day I was like five, six years old. And my, my older brother, he was, uh, he was bringing me home from school. He was like 13 at the time. We were just waiting for the elevator. And then some undercover, undercover cop came through, pushed him against the wall, handcuffed him, you know, was like getting rough with him. And I was like really young, you know, and like, you know, my brother was like the only person I knew. So I just started crying in and cause like I felt what he was going through. And this was like, you know, my first year when I came to this country. And uh, yeah, so it was just like, that uh, that was like one of the first things I can I encountered when I like from my earliest childhood memory, you know, and uh, it's it's like it's always been like that. Um, New York's a little different because we have all types of brown people, you know, all types of black people and white people. So everyone has their unique twist on racism and discrimination. Everyone's got their unique lane of it, but. Um, you know, like uh, all the all the protests that are going on. For me, it's not even solidarity. It affects me directly. I can't, like I I I've, I've definitely I've been like uh. It's not like cops can tell the difference between black and dark South Asian. They really, because most cops are just from like white neighborhoods themselves. So you know, I I've gotten like pulled over a few times, even walking down the street. Um, I've gotten like weird like jaywalking tickets and stuff for no reason and they'll put black on the race which i think has to do with some nypd quota shit but uh you know it's like a real i don't know how to describe it because to me i knew from a young age that i was a second class citizen my parents would tell me like if something happens you can't tell anyone about it make sure you don't make the problem worse um <clears throat> You know, like, I, I wasn't even a citizen until, like, uh, you know, after high school. So I, it was just always, uh, I just always knew it was like that. Um, which is why I can see the hope right now. Because now it's like, oh, you know, I like that the argument is for to be seen as human. Because maybe now we won't have a two-tiered system, you know, where some people get the full rights and then everybody else gets the second tier of rights. Or, you know, if you want to get in detail black people at the bottom which is like a fact but it's actually if we all start to you know if the if the greater push that we're all coalescing behind is to get people to see our humanity then that's actually very dope like that could be really that could be game changing for us like i live my life accepting that i'm a second class citizen which is fine that's just how it's just how the world has worked you know but if that could change, then that's actually kind of exciting. That's kind of dope to me. So, yeah. So, I was not aware you were not born in the United States of America. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I, I came here when I was, like, six years old. Uh, and then I, I learned English watching Wayne's Brothers. That's how I learned how to speak English. And, yeah. Who was, who, who, who was your first friend when you moved to America? Uh... I mean, I, I that's, that's like a, like my my older brother probably because I hung out with my yeah. older brother and all his friends, and we all lived in uh, Col Colden Street Towers, uh, in Flushing, and that was just like you know every the buildings were so big everybody in the building was friends with each other so that's how it was for for a while. So so your older brother must have been culturally very Bangladeshi. Or Bengali. Yeah, I mean, he he's he's like he can he can speak white. He has a good white voice, but uh, you know, like he he only listens to Bollywood music. You know what I mean? He doesn't like. I only listen to like like you know rap and R and B. Uh, there's definitely like an age divide, but at the same time, like it was cool coming up with him and his friends because I low key think like they the generation like five years. It's the same generation, but people five years older than me they had like the best like movies music like they were in prom and Aaliyah was was blowing up 
Like that's like the perfect time, you know? Like Aaliyah Jet Li, Romeo Must Die. Mm -hmm. That's like your prom theme. That's like the best time to go to high school, I feel like. Then that was like my brother and his friends. So that's where I like I learned a lot of like all my references are like four years older than most people my age. Like I'm the only person I know my age who listened to all the all the Prince catalog, you know. Who did you have did you have a lot of black friends growing up? Yeah, I mean uh, so I, I grew up in a Dominican neighborhood, so all my friends were Dominican. So back then Dominicans were like, you know, oh I'm not black, I'm Dominican. But now of course now it's like, oh we Afro Latinx, so you know, whatever. Yeah. Um and then um my school was my school was very like black and Dominican, but then I got bused to this this uh alpha school and that was like we were the only kids that weren't like that. So it was like a it was like a class of thirty kids. 25 were Korean, four were Chinese, and then me and another Indian kid. Or actually, well, he was Guyanese, so. And it was like that. And then I, I also, um, when I got older, I went to Prep for Prep, which is like, you guys might not know about it, but it's like, it's like kind of big in New York. It's like they take all the low-income minorities and get them scholarships to private school. It's like where, like, uh, Homeboy Sandman was in Prep for Prep. I'm trying to think who else. Deval Patrick, right? Just like. It, it it has a thing um in new york and uh well and then so that program is like it's all black people and then like a few latinos few asians so i like basically only grew up around black people and uh i the first time i met a white person who wasn't my teacher was when i went to high school like my first year Damn. of high school but at the same time Damn, you know i know great. i know white people though i know white people i know how they think i got like a phd and in, in uh Ang Anglo uh, Anglo studies, you know what I mean. <laughs> when you when you when you started to make music, you you chose. Were you always Big Baby Gandhi? And how did you get that name? No, because why nah, why, cause why, was, invoke, uh... why why invoke Mahatma Gandhi into something that is so black. Oh, uh, right, right. Um, well, so I was always like, well, so okay, in New York, everybody raps. Or when I was coming up, everybody rapped. And then uh, I had a bunch of different rap names. They were all like conscious rap names. Yeah. And then when I put out my first tape, okay. um, I went with Big Baby Gandhi. It was like a tribute to ODB. Mm -hmm. His name was Big Baby Jesus. And then Gandhi mm -hmm. is for how they used to make fun of Indian kids. So in New York, the way you make fun of Indian kids, you call them Gandhi. And then you do the voice, you go, Gandhi, Mandi. So that's mm -hmm. how they make fun of you. Mm -hmm. So, and this was like, you know, battle rap era, Cassidy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I forget who else. That was my, but like, you know. And then, so I just took Big Baby Gandhi as like, just taking it back. Like, used to, they used to make fun of me with Gandhi. So I was like, oh yeah, it's me, Gandhi. Um, yeah. I understand the, Nas, the, the go nature. Ahead. The, what's up? Go ahead. You understand the nature? I mean, I know what you're asking. It's like Gandhi was anti-black and racist and uh, pedoph pedophilic tangent, pedophile tangent. Um, but, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just thought Gandhi was like, oh, that's what you call Indian people. But, um, you know, whatever. You know. Yeah, Nas said, charged up like I'm Gandhi. Yeah, and he now, said Gandhi, was, is from Gandhi, the... Gandhi was a fool. We fight to the death. He said that too. Book of Rhymes. And Book of Rhymes and 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 and, and Gandhi, if if Gandhi did in fact, so they say yes, but, he so was. Do we got a Gandhi statue in Atlanta? Do we? I think so. I'm gonna look it up. I'm on my computer right now. I'm, I'm gonna look it up. I'm not sure. <laughs> If we do, uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. There are a lot of there are a lot of Indians in Atlanta. Oh, you know what? There was a petition to have it taken down, but there was one. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> so, obviously, hip hop music may not have been a thing when Gandhi was around. 
I mean, so, even even Martin Luther King would uh, would highly cite Gandhi, right? Because that's where they got the idea of you know uh, not civil disobedience, but uh, passive. What is it? Passive nonviolence. Yeah. Uh, mm. Well, I don't know if you want to passive talk about resistance. This, right? but, so you know, people always talk about Martin versus Malcolm. You know, that's the that's the big question. You know, which route yeah. do you take? But you know the answer is yes, it's both. It's like both. it's very centrist of me, but you need you need a quote unquote Malcolm and a Martin, right? Because the way they work is one is the one that holds you accountable. So that's the one saying like, oh, we won't be, we won't let, we won't suffer uh, for no reason. You know, we're not going to take unjust punishment, and mm -hmm. we're going to push back. That's like Malcolm's way of thinking. And then mm -hmm. you have Martin, which is like, you know, we're we're going to be nonviolent to show how morally incorrigible the other our opponents are, and to do that, and we're going to. Uh, but the thing is, they work in tandem, right? So one thing is like Martin, towards the end of his life, he got more radical, became full socialist, uh, started the Poor People's Campaign, right? And uh, he was mm -hmm. starting to be very critical of white liberals, right? And then Malcolm X, he started off very critical of white liberals. But then when he went to, he went to Mecca, he came back and he, he decided, oh, I'm going to work more with more political alliances, you know? So they were both trying to, like, converge at something. You know, they were both seeing the utility of the other person's point of view. And, uh, but then it was too late. Was it I too mean, late for Malcolm? That's, that's, a, that's a that 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 depends on whether you think they were assassinated because of their political ideology or for some other mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I think they were they were taken out because they were black and had too much power, right? That's my thing. I don't think it's necessarily like, oh, Martin mm -hmm. Luther King is a socialist. Let's kill Martin Luther King, the socialist. I think it's Martin Luther King is getting a lot of people behind his cause and he's black. So let's take him out. You know what I mean? But you know, that could be debated. There's, there's books that argue that point, you know? So power, power is, is what, is what drove power is not what they strived for. It was merely no, a consequence. Uh, it, was, it was merely a consequence of, of their mission. And and, 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 and and their their ability to unite so many people in what in a single healer, in a singular belief. When 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 you started making music were were you, were you you said you had a lot of conscious rap names and conscious yeah. hip hop and yeah, on I, I social was issues. To, I was listening to like dubs. So I got into hip hop really young. So when I was like eleven, twelve, I would make beat tapes with the cassettes, right? And I would just record whatever I heard on the radio. So I used to listen to, uh, back then, Mr. C's throwback hour at noon. Mr. C's like this legendary New York DJ. And then I just used to record stuff. And then I keep listening to those tapes over and over until I got the internet when I was like 14. Right? So then I had spent like a good three, four years listening to music, like these songs I never knew. And then when I got the internet, like I would go to the library and I'd look up the lyrics to all these songs. And then I, and then I found out that I had been listening to like, the best of golden era from 88 to 94, right? So that's like my foundation. And then once I have more internet, I'm like, yo, like, let me find what I really like. It's like, I happen to love every tribe in De La song, right? And I'm like, yo, why are they so much doper to me? And it's like, oh, cause they're mixing consciousness with being cool. And then I looked into that and then I got into like all these really like Afrocentric conscious rappers, like Poor Righteous Teachers, X Clan, Brand Nubian. Brand Nubian was like the shit to me. Even though, you know, part you know, they're like dated now. And and Lord Jamar's homophobic, you know. But uh there was just so much good music that I was listening to where that was the basis of it. And I was I wasn't even I was a rap fan even like in the two thousands where or like even the like the late two thousands, early two thousand ten where all the conscious rap was like no longer popular, you know? So you had that divide in rap between, uh, you know, like, you know, you had the raucous thing that was starting up. You had the uptown doom shit that was starting up. 
a lot of these underground rappers who were spitting facts. And then you had mainstream rappers with the bling, right? This was like a real thing where I was following at the time, you know? So for me, I was always like, oh, I, I love, I like both because I love hip hop. But, you know, to me, like the smart conscious ra rappers were doper to me because you didn't have to be popular or cool to make good music. So like a, a bunch of being a fan of hip hop me meant you like listen to both. You know, it wasn't a two tier system. It was like very democratic. You could listen to whatever. Did Did you have a lot of Pakistani, Indian, or Bengali friends growing up? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess, like, I, I, they were just like my brother's friends. As I got older, like, I'd meet less. But I don't know. I, I, I got friends from all races. Like, when you when you grow up in Queens, it's like you know, like three people of every race. So just off that. You know, so I, I know why is there an anti-blackness in South Asia? Um, specifically, it's, it's like a it's like a tough question. Well, it's not tough. Uh, it's because of anti-black. The, the textbook answer is anti-blackness is global, right? A lot of social hierarchies are built around, uh, you know, um, your proximity to whiteness. So in well, turn, like, why, like like you see, Pakistani kids loving black culture but being mad when a pakistani girl is with a black dude or or just being mad when, or older pakistani just being afraid of black people have you yeah, seen that uh, yeah i see that i mean i've seen all like i'm in, i'm from queens right i've seen all sorts of racism like i know black maga supporters i know ev like i know racist bengalis i know bengalis who work for aoc like I, I see the whole spectrum. Um, it's always weird to me when, like, when the they have the anti-blackness in South Asia discussion because it's like, it's cool that you know, like, the kids who can go to liberal arts school know what the correct opinion to have is, right? Like, yeah, you shouldn't, you should examine this within your own family or whatever. But mm -hmm. like, so, like, like dark-skinned people in South Asia, that's like the dark people that you are practicing racism and colorism too, but they don't mm -hmm. actually ever discuss that. Like, uh, obviously they're not comparable, right? But one of the reasons it's so easy to be hate, like hateful towards dark people, like when you see b darker people with bigger lips, rounder nose, that's ugly to you. That's part of your own culture's anti-darkness. I don't know what the right word for it is. We could call it colorism or whatever, right? But that's, that's, they share like the same basis, right? I'm not as dark as that. I have a higher social status. Therefore, I shouldn't be held to those standards. And because I'm closer to whiteness, my proximity to whiteness is higher, I deserve more. And I'm the protagonist in the story. I'm the hero here. Uh, it's the same, it's the same basic idea, right? It's like a, uh, there, there will be groups where if there's no black people around, whoever the darkest person is automatically becomes like the bottom of that totem pole, you know, just the way these race hierarchies work. Like I've been in situations where I'm the darkest and all of a sudden I'm like that, the person, whether I'm like the target of derision or not, I'm like the expert on being, you know, the minority who's maligned. And then I could be in a group of all black people. And in that group, I'm the privileged one, which, you know, I acknowledge. So, you know, it depends because there's so many different ways groups can form. Like society, right? Society is essentially like rotating groups of people. So, so mainly there were like the, the, the brown people that you, that you came up with were like family friends because they were friends with your brother. And thus they may have been older. And, I mean, and, I, and, I, and, I knew all kinds of brown people. They, like, okay, so they all said N-word, right? But everybody in New York says it. So, like, even the Albanians and the Chinese. So, yeah. you know. No, when, so, when, yeah. Uh, so, for sure, they're anti-black, sure. But it's like, yeah. No, every, no, everyone action, is. Action Bronson said it multiple times in early songs in his discography. Yeah. I mean. And, and, uh, when, I, and when I asked him, when I asked him, he just said that was Queens. He knew Chinese kids who said it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's just how it was. 
like that movie Kids, right? That's basically how everybody in New York grew up. But 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 why but why but, 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 but why do brown kids start hating when a brown guy or girl starts to make music that's that's within a black art form? Like, did you ever receive backlash from brown kids when you started rapping? No, I never. I never got any backlash. I'm sort of like a critical darling where uh, either people really like me or they would feel weird dissing me because then it's kind of like. It's kind of like giving me uh, validation if they diss me, you know? Mm -hmm. They criticize me, it's almost validating me. So I don't think I've ever really had anyone, I've never gotten anyone that angry or that offended where they would even hate on me. And I think it's because I'm too nice, you know? Like I got skills. How does your family, does your family know you're an artist? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I've been rapping for, so long like uh my my uh my first tape came out when i was 18 i'm 30 now yeah. you know so mm-hmm. it's like no respect i've seen i've seen it all you know Facts. i know how the music industry works now to the point where it was like nobody's making money in music you think this coronavirus is gonna make it easier to make money in music you're getting 0.00003 per stream you think that's gonna work out for people you know the streaming industry is projected to make up 30. You think that that's going to work out for the artists? You know, it's, it's not. It's not a viable industry. I mean, like all industries, right? All industries suffer from the same problem where whoever, uh, like Amazon, right? Like whoever has the most resources continue to co- consolidate and buy it up till they approach a monopoly. And that's happening across all industries, including music, right? Have you inspired any brown people to start rapping? Yeah, I, I get like one of those emails like every, once a month, like, yo, you, you were so dope. You stay rapping for brown people, which is dope, you know, but that's never my intention. Because for me, it's like I grew up in old school hip hop, right? Like I still listen to Grandmaster Kaz, right? I know like the tenets of hip hop. You just keep it mad real. Always be yourself. Hip hop is the only place where being real and honest and vulnerable works out for you. Everywhere else in life, it will only hurt you. And it'll it'll hold you back from making the right connections to succeeding. That's that rap. That's what rap is like. But then there's like hip hop, which is like, all you got to do is be true to yourself. And hip hop is never really about being like, you know, the, the dopest or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just about being yourself. So I never had had that. I, I do see other brown artists have those problems, but I don't have them. You know what I'm trying to say? Why, why did you say in Yandi? Why did you say, um, you, you said, feel, I'm feeling too Bengali? Um, on that track. Oh, because cause that song is a song rate. where I'm talking about my mom crying. And uh, I feel like that's Bengali. That's very Bengali. It's like your mom is crying because of her place in the world, one way or the other. Uh, and, that, and then if you feel too much of that emotion, like you're, like you're second class, like you're not good enough, that you're not, uh, you know, even if you compare yourself to like Indian people, where it's all about being like, Oh, look how well educated I am. Look how great of a person I am. Look, you know, concerned with social status. You're going to feel Bengali because it's like, oh, look at me. I actually come from a poor country and our family has nothing. So, and and I'm short and dark. Oh, man, I'm so Bengali. You know, that's the, that's the thinking. Why, why is rap, in, at least socially, being kind of held by by J. Cole, who's joined the marches in Fayetteville. And since Tupac, we may have not seen a more personable artist. Oh, like why, of, why aren't there more mar- woke, woke culture, cultural leaders in hip hop? Is that the question? There, yes, there were in 2005. I mean, it's, it's uh. There's no rebellion. There's, there's no it depends. activism. Like, uh, 
like okay there's like two there's pockets. exceptions right like like Tory Lanez is speaking out and no one would consider him to be like a woke rapper like J. Cole but he's speaking out and I feel like he's on point but at the same time you know there's a lot of you know there's a lot of like woke rappers like you could like a chance the rapper who's just you know who's just Obama's like nephew who's clearly like a political plant who's going to be mayor of Chicago in the next 20 years. So it really, I mean, okay, I, I, I'm not trying, I'm not giving you a straight answer, but it's like, um, I don't, I don't believe in that binary of someone who's making woke music is going to be woke and someone who's making turn up music is not going to. Um, I think musicians like, like the same as actors and and all these other people who do have a lot of money are all tone deaf right now, right? I think it's like an exception for someone with a lot of money to not be tone deaf about what's going on. And we could apply that to rappers. You know what I mean? Like all these celebrities, they are very out of touch. They really don't know why people are protesting, right? Because for sure, you know, George Floyd's death is the the catalyst, but People are upset about a lot of a lot of things right now. Forty million unemployed. We never recovered from two thousand eight recession. Racial wealth gap is like increasing exponentially, right? These are like huge problems. Most jobs are going to be lost to automation in about ten years. Half of all jobs are going to be lost. So, you know, this is there's a lot going on and. Uh, if you have a lot of money, it's easy to be out of touch with what normal people are feeling. And money kind of numbs you to that shit, too. You know? And I say wow. that as someone who's, like, not 100% anti-capitalist, you know? But it's just true. Money, money like, yeah. it, it isolates you from others, you know? Yes, because not everyone has it. Yeah, and I you mean, only start to like... see things as someone who has money. You're not thinking about what if someone doesn't have money, how would they react to the situation? If you don't have money, you're going to react way more drastically because you don't have the basic things you need to survive. You know, you're in survival mode when you're when you're poor. You're thinking way more about. You have like a, a scarcity mindset, you know, it's like I got to fight, I got to claw to survive. And that just changes how you look at everything, you know. Why, why haven't I seen a single brown person on the news in any of these protests or marches? I mean, I can name a few, but I know what you're saying. Well, one is if we're talking about U.S., brown people yeah. are, it's only like, what, 3%, 2% of the population, you know? We're like, not e we're like a sixth of East Asians. I don't see East Asians out here protesting. Um, two, uh, I've been to the protests the last three days, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I've seen other brown people. My friend Mumita, I want to shout her out. She runs uh, Millennials for Bernie. She's been organizing the Jackson Heights, uh, one of them, and then she's been doing the Mutual Aid Fund. So I've seen it. But, you know, I think what it's kind of like, uh, for example, right, like Andrew Yang, he's like the first Asian guy. So he gets a lot of attention because he's like, he ran for president. And now it's like, wow, finally, Asians have someone to represent them. But I'm sure there were a lot of Asians doing the work, you know, so part no, of it is also I, I being see. palatable to the media. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff going on that we don't see because what the media controls. Like, these protests, wanna, right? Wanna... These protests are overwhelmingly peaceful, like 99% peaceful. And we're only seeing the skirmishes of the police, you know? We're only seeing the rioting. We're only seeing the, the property damage, which is bound to happen. I want to see what, 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 where are, where are, where, where is Cal Penn? Where is Aziz Ansari? Where is Kumail okay, Nanjiani? Okay. Where well, is Kumail, Kumail Minaj? Been tweeting. Where is... Kumail's been tweeting, just putting that out there. No, He's I the mean, one. I want to see Kumail in the streets. Because if people oh, okay. don't see him in the street, they can see him with a six pack on Instagram, but they can't see him getting swollen in the well, streets. They can't see Rupi Kaur reciting a poem in the middle of a protest do your job in the protest you you don't see aziz doing stand up comedy in the middle of protests hey I, I i get what you're saying now i'm following you now 
Why aren't they? You know, it's probably because it's not good for their brand. What do what do the what do these people really care about? You know. But they've accomplished so much already. Their brand is damn near indestructible. Yeah, but like you know, let's okay. Like I I agree, and I see where you're taking me. But let's keep it real about celebrities, okay? Mo even the the celebrities now who are who are adamantly supporting of this movement, even they're using it to boost their brand, right? That doesn't mean it's like all bad, but you know, like a lot of these celebrities don't matter. You know what I mean? Celebrity lives don't matter. That's my that's my take. You know. They they can influence brown kids who are like fifteen and younger. Yeah, I mean, just by could, visibility, in, in it's back of, to the in visibility the game of like representation. Sure, but a lot of South Asians, a lot of brown kids, uh, they don't look up to other brown people. Brown people aren't like you know, no one's no brown person is like, yo, Mindy Kaling wrote like eight shows, she's killing it, you know. Yo, Kumail Nanjani won an Emmy for best screenplay. Yo, he's killing it. Like, you know, I'm brown people don't one. support other brown people like that. I'm so, the only one. I, I would get I would get hype when I would see Cal Penn and Harold and Kumar. Yo, I mean, yo, Cal Penn worked under the Obama administration. He worked for him, you know? He was part of his cabinet. <clears throat> Absolutely. So... I'm 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 disappointed. I'm disappointed in 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 everyone, and everyone, yeah. in everyone who is who has a platform and is a keyboard warrior and and has millions of fans, but won't well, but won't, like Aziz Cal. Like I can keep Nav. I I know Nav, what you're saying. For Nav to for Nav to there, be a rapper. They're South Asians who use the fact that their identity, they use their identity to get, get our support, right? They'd be like, yo, I'm South Asian, so I put on for South Asians. You should support me because of my identity. But when they don't do like, like what you're talking about, when they, they don't go out and do things to make us, you know, to gain our goodwill, like, for example, going out to protest, you know, go, donating money, raising money, right? Those things that could earn our goodwill. When they're not doing that, they don't really deserve our support based on their identity. You know, based on their status as a South Asian, they don't deserve our support if they're not gaining our goodwill. That's how that's how it should be. I think maybe you're hinting that they still get that love even though they don't do anything to gain that goodwill. Yeah, especially if you're especially if 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 you're not if, if if the goodwill. Well, see, this is why I don't blanket support someone just because they're South Asian. That's the real, you know, but, just because someone's uh, South you, Asian doesn't mean they're good, you know. No, but I'm I'm somewhat rooting for them because I want them to just do the right thing, especially when especially if they have eight million fans or eight million followers on Instagram. <sighs> Because that's a lot of Yo, people. You know, that, you know, that you know that's really a lot of crazy people. because... No, because you're right, right? Like, what did we learn from the primary, right? Bernie versus Biden. We learned that Bernie, with the grassroots organizing, millions of dollars raised, it couldn't beat just simple media influence. Biden didn't even campaign in a lot of states, and he won them, like, two to one, right? And all he, all he had was the media. All he had was CNN, MSNBC talking about him all day. So I, I get what you're saying. Like the power of media is so strong. Like, for example, like we don't have a way to fix politics, right? But if The Rock wanted to run for president, he could easily win and just change everything. All it takes is one celebrity to step up and they could do that. Or let's say all of the people who supported Bart Bernie, like Mark Ruffalo, Susan Sarandon, they all ran for office on his platform. That would change, like, all of, like, let's, for, for example, the House of Representatives. They have that power. But, you know, those celebrities, they also see that you go into politics, there's no winning, you know? Because you got to be good at it. You got to be good. <laughs> you got to be, like, a good politician, like, good at uh, communicating with people what you're trying to do. 
when 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 it comes down to it there is um there is just a there 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 is some there is some there's some disconnect there between just between the, the south asian american population and the black population despite despite many of them Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoying, enjoying, brown people in, love to in, love to act black. Yeah, yeah. Brown yeah. people love to act act black. They love to be an uh, ally. They love to steal culture. They love to pretend like they're not as bad as white people. They love to do all that stuff without doing any of the work or supporting them. Right. It's it's the same. Uh, you could it it could even apply to white people. Right. A lot of white people think they're the good white person because they care, and that's that's not how it works. So I get what you're saying. For me, right, me personally, not not to like distance myself from it, but I have a vested interest in making sure black people are treated as human because like, okay, for example, like I'm also Muslim, right? My name is Nafis bin Islam. Whenever I go to the airport, I get mad shit, TSA, anything where they look at my license, right? But I get way more shit for being mistaken for black. So I'll get pulled over, or I'll, you know, they won't let me in some club or whatever. That shit will happen to me way more. So for me, I have the experience to know that black people have it way worse than even Muslims or South Asians, because I, I face it in my life, you know what I mean? And I'm not even black. Do you get what I'm saying? So you, I think, you, you know, obviously. You, I, I know, I know we've, you, 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 you've said to me before that because of your appearance, people have thought you're black. Is that true? Uh, yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. But yeah, it happens all the time. But I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm just yeah. reporting back. You know, from reality, how the lived experience is. For me, if uh, you know, Black Lives Matter isn't some solidarity issue. It's so that I don't have to keep dealing with the police the same way either. That's really why I support the cause and I want to for the rest of my life. I've accepted it, but that's not what I want. I'm actually really, really excited that we're getting a bunch of people together for this common cause, you know? Because that's, that's literally my political ideology. However, we could get everybody together behind one cause what whichever direction that is that's what i'm for because only power comes when we're all working together and you know the media illuminati they make sure that we feel divided but to me my only thing is let's all stick together and we got this you know how do you see the rest of the overall situation playing out I mean, the stuff from today, like you saw the shit that happened like an hour ago, the Trump in D.C. saying he's going to bring out the military. He yeah. said, if you guys don't have police out there, I'm going to send the military. I'm going to do some sort of martial law. He's evoking, uh, you know, 1800s constitutional acts to do it. Um, so, OK, at, at the protest, right, one of the things I was going to say is they were overwhelmingly peaceful, like 99 percent. Just people just hanging out, just like, hey, you know, we're just here, we're hanging out, we're, we're making sure we're seen and heard, right? But, you know, the media and also, you know, you, conspiracy theories aside about uh, who's causing the property damage and all that, they're trying to make it so that they can flame the fire to be like, yo, look at all the rooting and uh, looting and rioting. When even, if you consider the amount of people that are out, it's minuscule, right? It's just going to happen just from people being out and interacting with police. There's going to be some conflict because of the large amounts of people. But the media and the, the state, they're going to focus on that so that they have an excuse to ramp up law enforcement, which they're doing today, right? Like Cuomo said they're going to double the police force, right? So now they're going to get more police. That's going to escalate the situation, escalate the violence. And then, well, like the Republicans, right? They need all the... There's a lot of people who are at home right now. They're rooting for the cops. They're too pussy to protest. The cops are protesting in their place. The cops are the counter protesters. So, 
you know, all of, all of this is just to be like, okay, now we can get more people, more army out there. The more violence you have, now they can point to the Repub to the right wing. They could be like, look at all these people engaging in violence. It's all their fault because cops are good. Cops are never do anything wrong. And now they're going to be like, look at all these people who are doing this. And that's the plan. That's Trump's plan is to make testing look bad. You know, that's the whole point. So this is what so, I was saying before about no. Malcolm and Martin is mm. you need both. You need one side that's like, yo, we're not going to take this lying down. You need another side that's like, yo, we want nonviolence. And then you just both sides put out demands and see what can get passed. It's like they work together. You know what I'm trying to say? Like you can either have the side who won't take it lying down, scare the middle of the country so much that they give in to the nonviolent or the nonviolent people get beat up so bad that it shames the middle of the country into giving some other rights. That's like the only way. And it's sad, but like historically, the way it happens is uh, people are going to have to like take a lot of suffering and pain and damage in order to get those additional rights. But that's the best case scenario too. Can one song or music video gain people's attention right now? I don't think they could even before this. Like the Jay Electronic album dropped. Everybody forgot about it. I've been we bumping that every day. That. Everyone forgot about it. I've been, I've been bumping <laughs> that every day. That should be the soundtrack. That album is crazy. That's the album of the year to me. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to Jay -Z, say about the Jay -Z. Because, like, like, The reality is, though, uh, oh. whatever whatever media we create can easily be co-opted, right? Even protesting can be co-opted by the state. So to me, it does almost doesn't even matter what the music is. You know what I mean? Because mu music as, a, as protest, as like, like in the 70s, they used to make songs for you to play at the protest because they were protesting so much, right? It's not like that now. You know what I mean? I mean, hey, maybe it happens because these protests, like, fingers crossed, these protests last all year, that would be fire. And then we can have, maybe we could get there. But the protest music we had in the past was because people were protesting. The reason a lot of our music now is about, like, getting, getting as faded as possible is because that's what people are doing, you know? Which is, I'm not, I'm not uh, looking <clears throat> down, talking bad about getting lit. It's important too. You gotta have balance. <clears throat> what What would you personally like to see? And and have you heard from your peers in music about what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I, I gave up peers? on the entire music industry. Okay, real talk. I gave up on all of them. They're all uh, either they're the sons of like record label execs or billionaires, millionaires. I'm not even exaggerating. I'd say about 80% of people in the music industry, their parents are millionaires, right? Or they're actually trying to, they're in their like artists who are trying to make it work. And those people are, have such a burden of trying to make it, just the bear just surviving, that what can they even do? We can't even expect them to do anything. You know what I mean? It's almost cruel to be like, yo, you're creating music for us, now save us and, and lead us in the revolution. You know, that's crazy, too, to me. So uh, I don't think it's going to happen in music, bro. And the system, they made the system just like that, you know? All the people who can save us are the people with power and money, and they don't give a shit. they rather get uh, uh, a million likes for saying, for a tweet, than to raise uh, $10,000, you know? Like Virgil, that's how it is. You know? They're, they don't want to put the... I the money is the least you could do. The least you could do is give money, you know? Are you comfortable with, spe with speaking on Dots Racist and Heems? Uh, uh, what about it, you know? When did you first meet them? Um, like, really, really early on. I, I emailed them some of my beats. Dap was going to use some of them, Dapwell. And so I just kept sending them stuff. And then I was like, yo, I also make music. And then uh, they really liked it. We dropped the first mixtape in like a few months. Uh, that first mixtape was dope. No one knew what I looked like. 
I didn't have any internet presence. It just kind of blew up. And that was fire, made me feel validated. Uh, and then I just kept like trying to make music till like I had to like finish up my school. So then I just kind of stopped making music so I could get my degree. But looking back, you know, it was actually smart to, you know, like I have a, I have a doctorate and I, I have a day job for like the last five years. And a lot of people I came up with who in that music scene, either they don't even like, like their, their soul got, you know, squeezed out having to deal with the bullshit in the music industry or, you know, the fads just passed them by, which, you know, is going to happen to every rapper. And it's, it's also been happening. <laughs> the trends have been uh, dissolving exponentially over the last few years, right? Like a rapper blows up and then they're out, you know, like Fetty Wap, you know? Yeah. So for me right now, it's like, I don't even like, like I haven't been wanting to make music during, during Corona because just doesn't feel right you know like i don't want to create new memories even you know of, of music you know because music is uh tied to your memory just sound is tied to your memory in your brain but uh you know i'm actually working on a project where i'm working on a project right now that's all analog so no digital equipment so i'm going to use a cassette tape with vinyl and uh pause tapes to make the whole album but that's going to take me like three, three years at least, you know, like one making one beat takes like a week. You know what I mean? Do you see yourself speaking with Heems about this? Nah, I mean, I don't talk to, I don't talk to any of the greed head dudes. Like, I mean, I talked to like Dimitri, DVS and, you know, a, a bunch of the, a reason that I stopped working with a lot of them was because, a few, a few years ago, they all came out with sexual assault allegations from people I knew. So I'm just like, oh, you know, I don't even really, I didn't even really even talk to these people for a minute. And now this is going on. And I tried to talk with people who knew about it to, to like confirm it, you know, and I got all these weird answers to the point where it's like, you know, it's probably better to, that this isn't what I, like, this is not even what I'm about, you know? So I don't really see that happening but at the same time you know it's like a lot of shit going down that's our ally too you know anybody who's trying to make the world our better place that's our ally doesn't mean we gotta be best friends but you know all power to those people you know it's hard to it's hard to hate right now with everything going on real talk no for real for real um yeah man i uh i thank you i thank you for taking time today i appreciate you oh word 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 you're yeah. gonna put this up somewhere i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and post it post uh i'm gonna see if i can post it on my feed um and then upload it i got a minute i think there's a minute left anyway because once you hit an hour it starts to it starts to count down word word all right well yeah bro yeah man i just uh i wanted to tap in with you just period just period because for sure i know shit is going down over there like, yeah. uh, you know, all the COVID shit started jumping off here. This was like the epicenter. Like, I, I live in Jackson Heights now. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully uh, things are going to get better. You know, we're all going to we're all going to make our voice heard every day. And it's not just about one person, you know, it's about all of us playing our role. You know, we all got our tiny roles to play. That's more exciting than whatever some stupid celebrity is doing. You know, for sure. As, as long as long as we keep playing those roles, I think I think we are going to see some change. Yeah, everybody, everybody, you know, even the most famous people, most people have one thing they're good at. So just just pick that one thing that, you know, you can do. That's mm -hmm. all it really is about. Just do that one thing, even for your life, even if it's not for other people, you know. Until hopefully we speak again soon. And, uh, right, and I'm going to holler you know. at you. Peace. All right, bro. Peace.